Hello guys, welcome to the second part of my Unity Assets tutorial for VAM. While the last tutorial covered the handling and conversion of assets, we will focus in this one on creating own simple environments and assets with ProBuilder. We will also see how to do proper scene lighting with low performance impact invert M8, make our own sky domes and export everything as asset bundles. ProBuilder is a free tool to model and texture simple assets or even sketch complete levels directly in Unity, while ProGrid enhances the snap to grid functionality which is extremely helpful during modeling. Normally you can install ProBuilder and ProGrids directly from the Unity package manager, but as you know unfortunately we have to use an older Unity version to be compatible with Vertimate 1.x. And this Unity version is not fully compatible with the current ProGrid versions which are offered over the package manager. This will only change when Ritamate 2.0 comes out and allows us to use a newer Unity version for asset creation. Luckily the valuable community member MacGruber has created a ready to use Unity project which includes ProBuilder and ProGrids already in old enough versions to work with Unity 2018.1.9 f2. Either find the download of this project with Google by typing MacGruber Unity Asset or use the link to MacGruber's Patreon page in the video description. The file needed is the Unity Asset Bundle project. MacGruber made a bunch of great tools for VAM, so I can only recommend to check out his other Patreon posts as well. Once downloaded, decompress the file and copy the included folder to your Unity Projects folder. I would recommend to leave the original file as a copy to have a fresh project master in case you mess something up. Then open the project via the menu, load project and use the open button to find the project folder. And you are set. All necessary project settings for VAM compatibility have already been done. After the installation we find two new entries in the tools menu, ProBuilder and ProGrids. Actually ProGrids is already started, which you can see on the overlay buttons in the scene window. Let me give a very quick overview. The first field on top shows the grid resolution. Currently this is set to 1 meter. So objects or vertices snap to full 1 meter steps. The second button allows to hide the grid while snap to grid is still active. The third button enables or disables the snap to grid function. I add a cube to show this. When snap to grid is disabled we can freely move the cube around. When the grid is enabled the cube snaps to the closest grid junction. One important progress setting has to be mentioned. You see in the transform window that if I move the cube in Z direction, it snaps only to the grid in Z direction. The other axes are not yet snapped. This is depending on a setting in the progress preferences called snap method. This is currently set to snap on selected axis. In case you install ProGrid independently from MacGruber's project, the original setting might be on Snap on All Axes, which makes the object snap to all axes even if you modify only one axis. In particular during modeling and working with faces or vertices, this can give strange results, so I would recommend to use Snap on Selected Axis. This way you have much more control. However, you can always use the fourth button called Push to Grid, which instantly snaps all selected objects or vertices to the closest grid junctions. The last four buttons named X, Y, Z and 3D just control in which axis the grid is shown in the scene window. And there is one toggle button missing, which defines whether the grid origin is locked or follows the movement of the pivot point of the selected object. I prefer to leave the grid fixed as visual reference. For a more detailed tutorial about ProGrids, follow the link in the video description. Now let's have a look at ProBuilder. 
we need to open its window over Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder Window. Pro Builder opens a window in text mode with a long list of commands. When we right click on a free area in the Pro Builder window, we find some configuration options. Here we can decide whether we want to use Pro Builder with a floating window or if we want to dock it. We also can choose between text mode and icon mode. I normally use icon mode and will do so in this tutorial. Note that the content of the window is context sensitive. So not all icons can be clicked right now, some are greyed out. In addition to the tools window, you might have recognized this new overlay in the scene window. Here we can select the edit modes. The first button on the left activates the object mode, where we can move and modify the complete ProBuilder objects. Then we have vertex mode, edge mode and face mode. Depending on the current selection, the content of the tools window changes to allow only relevant actions for that tool. I prefer to have the ProBuilder window docked to the Unity user interface, so I move it right here beside the hierarchy tab. You might find better positions for your workflow. During modeling we will most of the time use the selection mode toggles in combination with the standard Unity Move, Rotate and Scale tools. So do not get afraid of the amount of buttons in the Pro Builder window. Most of them you will only use occasionally. So let's build something. Usually we will start with some basic shapes, which we will then modify and refine. We add those by use of the New Shape tool. When we click the button, a new pop-up window opens and we can select between various different shapes. For example cubes, stairs, prisms, cylinders, planes and so on. Each of these shapes come with a set of adjustments. For the stairs, for example, we can modify the number of steps, we can add a curve and we can define width, height and depth. I'm just showing some examples. So let's start to build with a cube. I'm going to create a ground plane with a height of 1 meter now. So I change the X and Z dimensions to 8 meter and leave Y on 1. Before we continue, let's have a quick look at the different selection modes now. In object mode we can move, rotate or scale the whole ground plane. To switch between those modes, we can also use keyboard shortcuts. W means move, E means rotate and R means scale. Next up is the vertex select mode. In here we can select one or more vertices by use of the shift key in combination with the left mouse button. We can also use the drag select box to select many vertices at once. In the Edge Select mode we can select single edges or, again with the Shift key, select more edges. Once selected you can move edges around with the Move tool, rotate them or scale them. And finally we have the Face Selection toggle. Once faces are selected you can as well move, rotate or scale them and so modify the shape of your model. Right, now that we have a nice ground plane we will start building something on top of it. Let's use the new polygon shape tool to do this. ProGrid is set to a grid size of 1 meter. So when we click on the plane, we should right snap the vertices onto these junctions. As soon as the shape is closed, we can define the height of the shape by moving the mouse. Thanks to ProGrid, we can also do this precisely in free space. Based on this L shape, we want to build the walls of the apartment, which we are going to create during this tutorial. So let's give it a fitting name. As we will have many items, it is a good idea to start naming them right from the beginning. And the cube is supposed to be ground. We don't need the ground plate, so we hide it now. To make the inner area of the L shape free, first activate face selection mode, select the top and the bottom faces while holding the shift key. 
Then select the scale tool. As said, we can also use the R key on the keyboard. Hold the shift key and scale the faces down in one of the horizontal axes. Now do the same for the other horizontal axis, but this time without pressing shift key. Holding the shift key while scaling actually enables the extrude mode, means the original face shape is duplicated and not deformed. Now we are scaling the edges of the inner faces so that the distance to the outer edge is similar to all sides. We scale the grid down to 0.25 by use of the minus key on the keyboard. Then we enable vertex selection mode and with drag select we mark all the vertices on the top side and the bottom side simultaneously. Finally we switch to move mode and use the grid to place the corner vertices with a distance of 0.25 meter to the outer edges. Repeat this for all corner vertices. Select the lower face and delete it by hitting the backspace key on the keyboard. Then select the top face and with the shift key pressed move the face down by 1 meter. And we have created our walls. The only thing left is to delete the active face by use of the backspace key. In order to have no overlapping vertices, means several vertices on the same position, enable vertex select mode drag select all vertices and use the well tool to combine vertices which are on the same position. And enabling our ground plane again. In order to give our walls the correct height, select one of the top side faces, then press Alt G on the keyboard to extend the selection to the other top faces. Oh, now all faces are selected, that was not supposed to happen. I guess the settings of the Grow Selection tool have to be modified. To change those options over the Pro Builder icons, hover the mouse pointer over the gear symbol and click while holding the Alt key. Ok, the maximum angle is set to 90 degree, which explains why we are also selected the vertical faces. Let's set this to 80 degree. Now trying this again, select one face, press Alt G on the keyboard and now all faces on the top side are selected. Great, now we use the move tool to move the faces up to a height of approximately 2.5 meters. Actually I would like to make the ground plane a bit bigger. Easy task, select the faces and just drag it as required. Saving the current status. Ok, now that I see the walls from top side, I think the room inside is a bit too small, so let's make it bigger. This again can be done easily by dragging the faces, but we might have to use different grid sizes. First using 1 meter for the outside faces and 0.25 meter for the inner faces. Ok, this looks sufficient. Good, now let us add some windows into our walls. First activate edge select mode, then we use the insert edge loop tool to create new edges which split up our existing faces. Select one edge and click insert edge loop. Move the loop to the position where the left side of the window should be located. Insert a second edge loop for the right side. Now we have to fix the position of the inner edges, sometimes they are not correctly aligned. A double click on one edge of the edge loop selects the complete edge loop. And now we create the top edge for the window by use of the connect edges tool. Select two edges and click the respective icon, doing the same inside. The next steps are to delete one face either on the inside or the outside and extrude the other face while holding the shift key. Then delete the extruded face with backspace. Select the affected vertices and use the weld tool. Finally delete the two unneeded faces on the bottom by use of the backspace key.
repeating the whole process for the second window. I will use fast forward from now on for repetitive actions which have been shown earlier. The whole process including texturing and lighting took about two and a half hours, which would be extremely boring to watch. For the back side we will create two smaller windows. As both shall have the same height, we will create a horizontal edge loop. To do so, select the vertical edge and create the loops. The rest of the process is identical to the other window openings. Now we are going to create a roof, again with the polyshape tool. For ease, we are just using the existing corner vertices. Perfect! Now we are going to create the window frames. For those we need a smaller snap value, let's take 10 cm. Taking a cube as a basis object. Scale it as required. Then we duplicate it and make it thinner as we will create the glass from this one. For this task we deactivate the snap to grid function temporarily. Same procedure as previously with the walls. Select front and back face, select scale mode, hold shift key and scale one axis down to extrude. Now select vertex mode and move all edge points to approximately 10 cm away from the outer edges. Then delete one face and extrude the other one while holding the shift key. Weld the overlapping vertices as usual. Now position the glass correctly and scale it down to touch the inner faces of the window frame. One window completed. Use Ctrl D to duplicate it and move it to the other window opening. Then we duplicate that window again, move it over to the other side of the house and scale it so that it fits into the big window opening. Once more duplicate, then rotate and scale it correctly for the last opening. Ok, now giving all the new objects proper names. Adding a brace to the frame by use of edge loops and extruded faces. Here we should delete the not visible faces. And don't forget to weld the vertices. Cool, the building is now so far ready. What about adding a pool? Selecting the top surface of the ground object, extrude, scale it down, position it correctly and extrude again. I obviously underestimated the required space for the house and the pool, so I'm going to enlarge the ground again. Now we are going to create the inner walls of the pool, which will later get a different set of textures than the ground. And again we are using a box as a base object. Scale it accordingly and then create the frame by use of the extrude function. Note how I stop 10 cm before reaching the end and use the extrude function to create a separate surface, which I then can further extrude. And finally welding the vertices again. It would be possible to delete the hidden faces to optimize performance, but this model is simply enough to skip this. In order to make the pool look a bit nicer, we are going to add a chamfer with the bevel tool. Select all edges which shall be affected. Then open the beveled edge settings window and adjust the distance so that it creates a nice looking bevel. Yes, I think this does not look too bad. To finalize the pool we will add a floor. In this case we will use a plane, just for some variance.
Now should we fill in some water? Adding another plane and scale it down so that it fits into the pool. As I do not know if the Pro Builder planes will work with an animated water shader, I use a standard Unity plane object in this case. Ok, I guess the modeling is so far ready that we can now start to assign the materials. Let's first add a materials folder and create a new temporary material. Color should be blue. Materials for Pro Builder objects should be added over the Material Editor. Just drag and drop the material into one of the slots. Then assign it with the button next to it or with the shown keyboard shortcut. Would a canopy not be nice? Ok, let's add one. Again, the base will be a cube. Ok, that is not bad. Let's leave it so. The canopy, as well as the windows, should be made from glass. So we are going to create a new material, name it glass and set the shader rendering mode to transparent. Assign the glass material to a slot in the Pro Builder Material Editor and assign it with the button next to it. Now open the Albedo Color Picker window and lower the alpha channel value to make the material more transparent. I guess a dark tone glass would look good for the canopy. So we change the color to grey and raise the alpha value to somewhat around 40, which equals to about 15% opaque. Then we raise the smoothness level to make the material more reflective. And with the metallic value we can add a mirror effect. Let's set this to around 50%. Great. Now rename the glass material to glass dark and duplicate it with Ctrl D because we need another glass material for the windows. We name this glass clear and in the albedo color picker set the color to white and lower the alpha value to zero, means full transparency. Now adding the new material to the material editor, select all the windows. And finally assign the materials by use of the respective button in the material editor. Time for textures. A good source is the asset store. Search for materials or browse in the categories to 2D, textures and materials where we find many subcategories. If you find a good material, download it and then import it to your project. Once done, you find the materials in the assets section. This is probably a task where you will need to experiment with the different materials and settings until you are satisfied with the look of the model. Starting with the walls. Then the ground. As a side note, previously downloaded materials and assets can be found in the store under your profile My Assets. Every asset from the store needs to be imported to the project first before you can use it from the assets area. Ok, these tiles should do it for the pool. Mm, I'm not yet satisfied with the walls. Let's find the better material. Mm, 
Now we add the water shader. I will select the legacy shader as this does not use so much tessellation, which is better for the performance in VAM. You can see the difference. We can use a preset and then play with the settings until we are ok with the look. Ok for now. So what is still missing? We should add a floor object to the apartment. Otherwise we only see the stone material from the ground, hiding the roof and using the polyshape tool again. So which material? I like that one, a wooden parquet. Would it not be nicer to have white painted walls inside the apartment? In order to assign a different material, we can separate the wall faces and create a new game object out of them. Select all faces with held shift key. Then use the Detach Faces tool and select Detach to New Game Object to make it completely independent. Rename the object. We will create an own material for these inner walls. Importing the textures and assign them to the material slots. Finally, add the material to the Pro Builder editor. And assign it to the walls. What else is missing? Ah yes, a material for the window frames. Let's make them use a white plastics material. Now the slots in the material editor get quite full, but we can overwrite the unused materials. Still something missing? Yep, the roof. Also here we make a new material. Where we use a rough cast texture for the albedo channel. But the normal map from the tiles. And we make the color somewhat darker. By the way, if you are running out of slots in the material editor, you can add more with the button at the bottom. We will probably never see the top side of the roof in game, but I like the tiles on the visible side faces. However, if you are a perfectionist, you could separate the top side with the face detach tool and assign a different material to it. Mm, I guess we should assign a brighter material to the ceiling inside of the house. As we have no roof overhang on the outside, we can just detach the inside face to a new object and assign the same material to it which we used for the walls. So now we will add some lamps to the ceiling. We use a cylinder as a basic object now and use 16 sides to make it round enough. Add a bevel. And on the bottom side we select all faces and combine them with the merge tool. Then hold shift and scale extrude the face a bit to the inside and make another move extrude. D 
detach this face so that we can give it a different material. Finally we are grouping the parts with an empty. For the light surface we create a new material. And for now we make it emissive. For the best performance in game, set the emissive light to baked. Last but not least, we create a spotlight and attach it to the lamp model. And add it to the lamp group. As we want to reuse this, we create a prefab from the complete lamp asset. Ok, let's place some lamps now to the ceiling. And increase the spot angle for a nice flute. What about a bit coloring? Yeah, disco feeling. Ok, I just realized there is one more texture missing here at the bottom of the pool. Disabling the water and assigning the same texture like we used on the pool walls. Now what's next? Wouldn't it be cool to be able to enter the room in VR? Well, let's create a functional door. First we have to get the window glass out of the way. So let's scale it down that it only covers the left side of the door. Now we are going to group all the window glasses with their frames. Then we just duplicate this window with Ctrl D, rotate it by 90 degree and move it to the right position to be our new sliding door. Then we scale the door so that it only covers the right section. And we make it a bit slimmer. As this is going to be a movable object, we have to make sure that it has a little bit of distance all around, so that it can move easily without any friction. For later steps it is very important that all the anchor points have the same orientation. Now we need to create a handle to be able to move the door easily inside VR mode. Once more we use the polyshape tool. We should orient the anchor in the same orientation like the other door anchors. So we mark all vertices, turn them by 90 degree, then go back to object mode and turn the model 90 degree back. Good, now the anchor point has the correct orientation and we only need to select the vertices again and turn them 90 degree clockwise. Center the anchor to the object and move it into the door frame. Now we give it the final shape. Rename the objects properly and group the handle to the door. Rename the mainframe. 
create a new empty as the new master anchor for the whole door asset and make the other objects children of it. Great, now to make our door interact with the physics engine, we need to add a rigid body component. We can leave all the settings as is. We do the same for the mainframe, but here we switch use gravity off and set is kinematic to on, because the mainframe shall not move or react to the physics engine. Last but not least, we add a configurable joint to the sliding door, as Unity does not offer a sliding joint component. When you set up the axis of the joint, make sure that your tool handle gizmo is set to local mode and not to global mode. This is important, because the axis in the configurable joint have to be set up in local mode. And as you can see, the local axis have not necessarily the same orientation as the global axis. Ok, we are in local mode and this is the axis in which we want to slide the door. As the arrow is red, we can see that this is the local x-axis. So in our joint configuration, we have to set the main movement axis to x, which is already the case as indicated by the number 1 here. The secondary axis is set to y and we can leave it as is. Our door is gonna be a sliding door, so we want to lock all the rotation axis. The X motion can be set to free for now, while Y and Z motion shall be locked. The anchor position should be zero. Ok, let's make a quick test if this works. To push the door, we create a new cylinder and scale it down. Um, before we test, let's optimize the colliders of the door. Now everything has mesh colliders, but due to performance reasons we should replace them with box colliders if possible. Attach a box collider to the door frame and as the glass is inside the boundaries of the door frame, it does not need an own collider. The handle will get three simple box colliders, which we scale according to the shape. Ok, now let's finally test in play mode. Why does this not move? Ah, I forgot to disable static mode, which is the default for ProBuilder objects. Static objects cannot move, so let's change this to nothing. Change children, yes, ok. Test again, yep, that's fine. One minor thing is still here, the door only stops when its colliders hit the walls. Mainly to show you guys how it works, I would like to fine tune this and limit the motion with the configurable joint. We can set a linear limit here. The width of the door is approximately 0.8 meter, so we set a limit to 0.4 meter. This limit of 0.4 meter is counting from the anchor point in plus and minus direction, so in total 0.8. In order to allow the full motion distance, we should move the anchor point to the center of the travel way. We do this in the x-axis. Ok, from this point we can move 0.4 meter to the left and 0.4 meter to the right. Actually, we must not change the main anchor, we need to change the connected anchor. Before we can do this, we should connect the configurable joint of the sliding door to the rigid body of the mainframe, to make sure the connected anchor uses local coordinates. 
now we can switch auto configure connected anchor to off and move the anchor in the X axis roughly to the center. And do not forget to set X motion to limited. Test. Aha, the door moves a bit too far to the left side and on the right side it does not close. So we have to shift the anchor a bit to the right. Yes, that looks good. We do not hit the frame with the handle. In case someone wants to use a hinge door instead of a sliding door, this can be done easily with the hinge joint. Great, so I would say our model is ready. Now let's have a first look at the lighting. As we can see, the light from the spots in the apartment is bleeding through the walls. This happens because we do not have yet configured the spots to cast shadows. But that can be easily changed. Ok, saving our scene. Before we come to the baking section, we have to fix one very important point. We add a sphere and set its position to zero. The position where the sphere is now is the same zero position where the standard model is located in Virtual Made when you load this asset. As this position is now in the pool, this is going to create some wet feet. To fix this, we can create a new empty and group the complete asset to it. I name the empty JLFN Room with Pool. This empty must be located on position 0. And now we select everything that belongs to the apartment, but not the camera, not the light and not the sphere. Then we move all this into a good position in relation to the sphere at position 0. To be a bit more precise, let's scale down the sphere and also make it a bit more visible by adding a red color. So that position should be pretty ok. And we can delete the sphere now. So when we now load this asset into VirtuMate, the female model will be right in the position where we previously had the sphere. Finally we select everything again and drag that into the empty to make it the new master anchor for the whole asset. And we save the scene again. Ok, now that we have built our geometry and finalized the texturing, we can finally focus on the lighting. Currently we have 5 lights in the scene. One directional light which simulates the sun and 4 spotlights in the apartment. All of these lights are currently using real-time mode. We could export the whole asset like it is now with real-time lights. These lights would behave exactly like the VAM internal lights, but with the same heavy performance impact. So this is not what we want to do, because there is one additional disadvantage. Here in Unity we can still move the lights around, but in VertiMate they are locked in place and we also cannot switch them on and off or change the colors and intensity. We have two possibilities to go from here. The first is to export the asset without any lights and the second is to export with baked lighting. We will soon try both variants. Before we start exporting, let's go inside for another heads up. When we disable the lights, we see that the floor is quite bright. This is due to the reflection of the skybox, as the environment reflects on the surface of the floor and the walls, without respecting that the wall should cast shadows. When we change reflections to custom, there is no reflection on the floor anymore, because we have no custom cube map assigned. But this is not what we want to do. We just want to limit the reflection to a reasonable level. One possibility to get rid of this is to work with reflection probes. Adding a probe over Game Object Light Reflection Probe. When we now look from outside, we see that the probe is pretty good positioned inside of the room. 
we can't see any reflections now on the floor and walls because the reflection probe is currently set to baked mode. For testing we can change this to real time. And for testing we can also change the refresh mode from on awake to every frame. We see that the reflections on the floor have already changed. And when we move the sphere we can see that the reflections on the sphere update. The box which we see outside is the boundary box of the reflection probe. The dimensions of the bounding box can be changed with the Edit Bounding Volume button. Every object that is inside the boundary box is affected by this reflection probe. So for instance we can see here that the water is now dark because as long the boundary box touches the water object it reflects what the reflection probe sees inside the house. When we move the box boundary so that it has no contact to the water object, the water gets instantly brighter because it now only reflects the sky, not the darker room. We resize the bounding box so that it only affects the internals of the room, the floor, the walls and the ceiling. Now we switch the reflection probe back to baked mode. To generate the reflection map we can either use the bake button in the reflection probe settings or the generate lighting button in the lighting tab. In case the lighting tab is not visible you can open it over the window menu. If you now disable the reflection probe we can instantly see how the reflections on the environment change. Ok, so before we continue, let's re-enable the lights and save the scene again. We are going to reload this scene later again. Now it's time to prepare our exports. The first export shall be done without any lights. So we disable all lights in the scene. In the lighting tab, change the environment lighting source to color and set it to black. Set the environment reflections to custom and set the skybox material to none. That should be all. Now to export this scene as an asset, save it with a reasonable name. Then drop the scene into the asset bundle browser, click build. And once finished, open the export folder and add .asset bundle to the file name. Copy the file to the word made folder into custom assets, then import it to word made. All this you know already. All lighting that we now see here comes from the native VAM lights. If you now disable those lights, we can still see a slight illumination on the asset. There is not much that we can do about this, except of using the Unity Acid Vermifier script. This script makes the asset react on the native VAM global illumination. Once GI is set to zero, we have a totally black scene. However, with the script enabled, the asset also reacts on the skybox illumination, so the sun reflects on the floor even through the walls. Seems our reflection probe from Unity has no effect here anymore. This means it clearly depends on the scene, e.g. whether it's day or night, if you want to use the Vamifier script or not. If we add native lights to the scene, they affect the asset and as well the reflections on it, as you can see on the water surface. And you can create a decent lighting by use of directional lights, spotlights and point lights. Ok, back to Unity. We reload our scene with the colored lights. Now we want to export this scene with completely baked lighting. The big advantage is that you can perfectly light your environments with as many lights as you want, without any performance impact in the VR application. In VAM, however, the baked lights have no impact on any native objects or characters. Ok, select all lights in the scene 
and change the mode from real time to baked. Then switch to the lighting tab and change also the ambient mode from real time to baked. Disable real time global illumination and at the mixed lighting set the lighting mode to shadow mask. If you want, you can select ambient occlusion to make the corners a bit darker. Baking always takes a while. Here in the pool we have a bit of a problem with some artifacts. I guess this is a material incompatibility with the progressive life mapper. It is not the water that creates these artifacts, but they appear directly on the tiles of the pool walls. If such effect happen for you as well, you can change the light mapper from progressive to enlighten. Also here you can enable ambient occlusion and if you activate final gather, the overall quality is improved. Click generate lighting. And the artifacts on the pool walls are gone. So this looks ok, we save the scene with a new name to export it later as an asset bundle. Let's create another variant first and change the light colors to white. We see that the color change has no visual effect because all lights are set to baked mode. So we first have to generate the light maps again. saving that variant as well. Now let's try to make a night scene. We change the skybox material to cosmic cool cloud. I would like to change the direct light settings, so I have to set this to real time. However, in order to make the engine react on this change, I have to refresh the light maps again. Changing the light angle. Then making the color a bit bluish and lower the intensity. Also reducing the intensity of the spotlights in the house a bit. Ah, I forgot to set the directional light back to baked. So I have to generate the light maps once more. Yup, this looks ok. But we now have a small issue, which is that the current sky dome will not export to the asset bundle. And as you know, WordM8 does not offer a nice and realistic night sky. Let's save the scene and see what we can do about this point. Ok, there is a possibility to create our own sky domes, which are not able to generate global illumination in WordM8, but still gives a nice look. Here's how to do it. I downloaded a nice 8K HDR 360 degree image from hdriheaven.com, which we now import. Here we can see the preview. To use this image we will now create a new material and name this skybox underscore night. We change the shader from standard to skybox panoramic. Now select the texture and review the import settings. sRGB should be switched off. Set alpha source to none. Disable generate mipmaps. Change the maximum size to 8K and the compression to high quality. Then hit apply. Now we can see that the image size in the preview has also changed to 8K, which is the original resolution of the image. 
Now open the material and select our image in the spherical HDR file requester. By the way, it's now also possible to use our new Skybox Snipe material as Skybox in Unity, including global illumination. Let's lower the exposure a bit to make the sky look a bit more nightish. But again, we cannot save this night sky box with the AC bundle. But we can assign its material to a sphere and save this with our AC bundle. Let's do so. Add a sphere, set its position to zero, and change the size to 5 meter for now so that we can see what is going on. Then we drag the material onto the sphere and we see it's disappeared. For a better understanding what happened, I just changed the skybox back to the standard one. And when we now move our camera inside the sphere, we can see that our night sky is visible from inside. So, the only thing left is to increase the size of the sphere to somewhat between 300 and 500 meters. And we are almost set. What is still missing is to set cast shadows to off and also disable receive shadows in the mesh renderer. Finally, remove the sphere collider as our whole scene in Vitamate will be inside this sphere. When we now save and export the scene again and load it into Vitamate, we find our apartment under a nice natural night sky. And also the room is nicely lit with no performance impact as all the lighting is baked into the textures. Now we can start to put some furniture into the apartment either from BAM or with other external assets. As mentioned earlier, if you place a model inside the room, it is not affected by the baked lighting. But we can easily add native VAM lights to relevant points to cover this. In this example we only need one single spotlight over the bed. If you use roughly the same settings, we do not see a difference between the baked lights and the native lights in Vertimate. Back in Unity, we can of course also create a prefab from our self-made sky dome and use this as a standalone asset. Here is a quick example how this looks with one of the VAM internal environments. As this is basically just a sphere, we can also lower it to hide the horizon of the sky dome so that it fits better to the cityscape. I continued a bit working on and refining the scene and here's the result. As you see, I added some baked lights to the apartment walls and as well added some baked lighting to the pool. So this apartment in different variants is now ready to use in VAM. Okay. That's it for now. I hope this tutorial gave you a good overview about the creation of environments in Unity. If you like my tutorials and want to support me, please check out my Patreon page. All assets created in this tutorial are available for download for my Patreons. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and happy webbing!